As part of your practical tips, you suggest looking for potential fraud risk. What kinds of things are you looking for? Well, there are many things we'll be alert to when we're looking uh, at an at a IPO candidate from a due diligence perspective. We, one of the things we look for would be complex corporate structures and extensive use of offshore entities. These may be, may be indicators of uh, trying to avoid tax uh, payments. Another area is uh, looking for evidence that company assets have been stolen. This is done by transferring to insiders, essentially leaving shareholders with empty shell company, uh, companies owning no assets. Numbers are an important thing in the IPO process, particularly employee numbers, uh, revenue numbers, etc. So we look for any evidence that these have been manipulated to kind of boost up the figures and make them more uh, agreeable to the IPO process. We look, we have a very keen understanding of, or we want to have a very, very keen understanding of the other business interests, usually hidden business interests that many of the key principals may sometimes have. This can be indicative of uh, conflict of interest issues where they're setting up competing businesses or businesses in readiness to compete with the IPO once it's all gone through. Another area we look for is uh, illegally obtaining VAT rebates, government grants and also low tax rates that they may have received from the local governments. This might be completely fine, there may be no problems with this, but we've got to look at the background and see if there's anything uh, less than benign uh, behind the reasoning, behind these uh, advantages that they've received. Other risk factors and red flags that we'd look out for, large and frequent related party transactions, if the background of the shareholders is, uh, is opaque or murky, we'd want to find out more about those shareholders and what their background is. If the company has expanded rapidly, particularly in relation to its peers in the industry in the local area, we'd want to know why. Is it genuine or is there something uh, not quite so honest about it? If the company's had a switch in their auditing firm, or several switches in some, some, in some cases, that can be indicative that there's been problems. They've had disagreements with their auditing firm. Why? What's been happening? These days, we hear a lot about hacking. What part does cyber due diligence play in the IPO process? Well, the SFC in the Hong Kong Exchange is certainly taking a more robust view of deficiencies in cybersecurity, particularly as they relate to licensed corporations. And there have been a number of SFC alerts over the past 12 months on cybersecurity threats. The SFC is pressing home the need for licensed corporations to protect their own systems from attack and similar messages are being seen from other financial authorities around the world. In relation to IPOs, currently there's no specific requirement by either the SFC or the Hong Kong Exchange for a sponsor to conduct cyber due diligence on a candidate's cyber security. However, the point can be made that it is part of the sponsor's job to proactively look for a range of potential risks, including cyber, around a listing applicant's business without the SFC and Hong Kong Exchange spelling it out for them. If sponsors don't start thinking about cyber due diligence, eventually one of their listing applicants will have a major breach and the public will lose out. It is not inconceivable that the SFC and the Hong Kong Exchange will go after the sponsor for not spotting the risk.